All right, now how would the naive people solve this problem? Well, naive people would say, gee, first the light starts here, then it goes into this medium, and then it goes into this medium. So they think they have to travel along the journey, and they first would figure out theta 2 using n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2, and then they would use theta 2 to figure out theta 3. Now that, that would work, though that, that would give you the right answer. Uh, by the way, that works because this angle is also theta 2, right? Because these are parallel lines. When you have an intersection between two parallel lines, these two angles are the same. So once you know theta 2, you can use theta 2 to find theta 3, but why don't we just cut out the middleman and use these two terms? Now, in this case, it just saved us a little time, but what if there was like four or five mediums? You don't want to have to work through all those different mediums. Um, so you just pick out the, end, the two n sine theta terms that you care about. So one of the ones you care about is the one you know the most about, and the other one is the one the question is about. We don't actually have to follow the life chronologically to work this through, even though that seems logical. All right, looks like you've already seen that. Have you seen that used before? In a, in a, oh, all right, okay. <laughs> so, good, okay, let's get to remember that. So let's see, let's say that, we go from the air <coughs> into the water and then back into the air. And let's say the initial angle is 30 degrees again. What would this angle be? Theta 3. That's what, this might have seemed trivial when we looked at this, but the interesting thing about this is you could go back into the same medium that you started with. So if you eventually get back to the medium that you started with, you'll get into that with the same angle. And this is really not all that obvious. After all, it, was, it would seem natural to think that the water could have changed you in some way, but the water doesn't have any effect except while you're in the water. The medium has no effect except while you're in the medium. Once we get back into the air, we have the same angle with the normal that we had in the air. Since the, uh, n1 and n3 here have equal ends, they should have equal theta's. And again, that saves us some time, especially if there's four or five media in between these two. Okay, good. The speed of light in a vacuum, uh, the symbol for that is C. Now, what's the difference between light with different frequencies? How, how would you be able to tell by looking at the light that it had different frequencies? Um, how bright it is? Or, no, it's, um... If you change the frequency, how would that be psychologically perceived? Color. Color, that's right. Different light has different colors. Okay. Do different colors have the same speed in the medium or different speeds? And it turns out that all wavelengths of light go at the same speed. All wavelengths and frequencies. And that means that also that would be all wavelengths and frequencies of other types of electromagnetic radiation, like radio waves and x-rays. However, light goes slower in a material medium than in a vacuum. Light slows down in a material medium. It slows down compared to what it would be doing in a vacuum. That's not, not hard for me to, um, to remember just as a memory aid. It kind of seems like when you're fighting through stuff, it seems like the stuff would slow you down. So just as a kind of memory aid, it seems to make sense. That's not a scientific explanation, but we'll just say it seems to make sense that when you're in a material medium, it would slow you down. So we can't use the symbol C for this speed anymore. 
Now we just use the general speed, letter v. So this is important in this part of the course. C is not always the speed of light. C is all, only the speed of light in a vacuum. C does not stand for the speed of light. It stands for the speed of light in a vacuum. If you're not in a vacuum, you just use the general symbol v. By the way, can anything go faster than C? No. I'm sure you've heard the famous line, no one can go faster than the speed of light. When people say that, they mean the speed of light in a vacuum. You can go faster than the speed of light in water. Light in a vacuum can go faster. Now, all the light in the vacuum goes at the same speed. But the, mediums, the medium slows the light down, but different wavelengths get slowed down by different amounts. Different wavelengths and frequencies are slowed down by different amounts. I think there was a problem in a previous homework, a bunch of multiple choice questions about when, what's true for all frequencies and what's true for different frequencies and different mediums. And the equation that tells us this is N equals C over V. What does C stand for? Speed. So then what does V stand for? Uh, the speed of light in the medium. So actually, I guess I should have corrected you. This is not the speed of light. It's the speed of light in a vacuum. C is the speed of light in a vacuum. And then V is the speed of light in the material medium that we happen to be thinking about at this point. Now, suppose that V is small. What impact would that have on N? because V is in the bottom of this fraction. So does N measure um, how fast the light is going or how slow it's going? N measures how fast it's going. Well, then N would be big when the speed was big. Oh, so then it's slow. Notice that N is big when V is small. So what does N measure? It measures how much the, me the medium is slowing the light down. The intuitive meaning to N is how much the medium is hampering the light. Remember, in our, in our kind of kind of rough, common sense way of looking at it, we're thinking of the medium as if it was slowing down the light. That's not totally rigorous, but that's good enough for us. So, N measures how much the medium is slowing down the light. What's the name of N? N is the index of refraction. Good. This is the same N that we were just talking about a second ago for Snell's law. So you can see that N plays two different roles. One thing N does is N can tell you how much the light got slowed down by the medium. And the other thing N can do is it can tell you, it can help you to figure out how much the light is being bent by the medium. So N goes into Snell's law. This is the same N. If you look up, if you look up, uh, 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 well, so anyway, this is where N is coming from. So you might have to put these two things together, basically. You might have to say, figure out N from Snell's law, and then figure out V from here. That would be a good exam question, because a lot of people don't realize these equations are linked up through N. So remember, remind me again, what does C stand for? The speed of light in a vacuum. Yeah, not just the speed of light, the speed of light in a vacuum. So what does V stand for? The speed of light in a medium. Yeah, and then N stands for? Index of refraction. Whose index of refraction? Whatever medium the V is referring to. So N and V have to refer to the same medium. The index of refraction of a particular medium is based on the speed of light in that medium. So to be concrete, the index of refraction of water is the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in water. Or the index of refraction of oil is the speed of light in the vacuum divided by the speed of light in oil. All right, so these have to correspond to each other. Every medium has a different N and a different V. 